The debate around what's best for the future of Irish football has been raging essentially for the last six to nine months and, and maybe even a little bit longer before that uh, to tease it out a bit more ahead of our game in Baku against Azerbaijan. I'm delighted to say we've got Philip Quinn of the Irish Daily Mail and Gavin Cooney from the 42 who is actually uncle uh, travelling Matt in Azerbaijan. What, what's it like in Baku, Gavin? I haven't seen much of it other than the inside of my own eyelid since I landed here. Um, I it took me 21 hours to get here. I get, I left yesterday morning, so I only got in into this hotel room about three hours ago. So I know tired and emotional is usually a euphemism when it comes to early morning sports punditry, but no, I genuinely am very tired and very emotional. <laughs> okay, well, we, we wish you all the best in the next 15 minutes. If you could just stay awake for that much, that would be great. Uh, Philip Quinn, good morning to you. How are you? Good morning, Chair, and I have to congratulate Gavin for getting up so early. Uh, clearly, a young man with lots of energy. Uh, I'm not. I'm not in. I'm not in Baku, but I am in somewhere beginning with B. I'm in Beaumont. I'm in my back garden. Well, very good. And, uh, for matters of the enough. state, uh, uh, for matters as important as the future of the Irish football uh, team, Philip, it's important that we we get people out of their beds in Baku. So, um, what's your take, Philip, at the moment on? where we are in the Kenny era. Um, Baku or bust, I think, is a headline from this week. So is it, is, it, is it that serious? If Kenny loses in Baku, is it curtains? Um, I think he'd be in a very difficult position if he lost in Baku, yes. Uh, I think um, he needs a strong finish to the World Cup and uh, it needs to start on Saturday. Um, and I, I don't, I'm not one of those people who'd love to see us, you know, win 3-0 and play beautiful free-flowing football. Um, from, from Kenny's point of view, if he gets a 1-0 win and it's a, it's a 94 to Hurtle Jane Duffy, I think he'll take it. We've actually scored a lot of late goals under uh, under Kenny. There is there is a lot of noise building. Uh, you can't avoid it. Um, my take on it is that he needs a strong finish to the World Cup campaign. And by that, I would think two wins against the weaker sides, the sides that we failed to beat at home, Azerbaijan and Luxembourg. I think Portugal will look after itself. There'll be a great atmosphere there. Everyone will want to see Ronaldo. Um, but the FAI are getting a little bit jizzy, jiggery, what's the word? Jiggy, yeah. that's the word, jiggy. I mean, it's 16 games, one win, no win in 12 competitive games. Ultimately, this is a results business. And if it's not about results and results don't count, you know, then what else does? Kenny has been given a lot of time and uh, the, the FAI have been very generous up to now. But the next couple of, this window and the next window are crucial. Back who are bust, if it was a two or three nil for Azerbaijan, I think, yeah, he'd be in big, big trouble. He, he, he might be gone before the November window. I don't see that happening though I think we'll be okay away from home under Kenny we've been strong we've taken the lead against Serbia taken the lead against Portugal and if we take the lead against Azerbaijan we should be good enough to see see them uh, and beat them and just give a little bit of momentum to the whole Kenny project because that's what he needs now, right now Okay Gavin what's your assessment of where we are at the moment? I, in fairness like Philip's right like we do need to There need. I do think there needs to be at least one win on the board by the end of the campaign just because Stephen Kenny has to make the point to the FEI board that I'm the guy to lead us through the Euro 2024 campaign and bring us to those Euros. And the best way to prove that you can win matches then is to have pr have proved to the board you've won at least one competitive match up to then. Like I would be broadly, like, I mean, I quite like what the manager has been doing and how he's been uh, changing how Ireland play and the young players he's infused. I think that's all necessary. I Like, it's staggering that it hasn't happened up to now. So I think all that's quite positive. Uh, there have been very mixed performances it has to be said across the uh, across the group so far results obviously haven't been haven't been great at all i don't know actually whether what is a one point in this qualification campaign i don't know if that's really a fair reflection of how ireland have been i think they probably deserve a couple more points uh, than that but um yeah Jerry, i think he i think he needs to get a win on board before this campaign rounds out just to uh, just to mint all the progress that has been made how jittery are the fai getting philip because it, it's well and good saying you want to get performances and results. Um, it, you kind of need an alternative that, that makes sense out there if you're going to replace your manager, particularly one who you've brought through your own system, who you gave some time to at the under-21s, although shorter maybe than uh, you would have you would have liked. And then ultimately there was the cack handed deal uh, done by Delaney to um, appoint him successor. And then that situation worked itself out the way it was. So... For the FAI to pull the trigger on that would kind of seem like it's another short-term fix to what ultimately feels to me like a long-term problem. Is that for me, Jerry? Sorry, I yeah. lost the, the yeah. signal there. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's short-term fix, long-term problem. Um, the question is, um, Kenny has been given a lot of time. I mean, it was 2018 when he knew he was getting the Irish manager's job. He was Irish manager under 21. 
and the senior manager elect. So he's had a lot, he's had a lot of time, a long running to get ready. He had 18 months to get ready, and he's had 18 months in charge of the team. Um, I, I broadly support what Gavin is saying as well. I think we do, we do need to play a little different way. Um, I think we've had a lot of teams that have played, not all hoof and hope, because there was some good football played by Irish teams on the previous Irish managers. Um, but you might have asked yourself, is Kenny the best man to do this job? Could somebody else not do what he's trying to do? Um, I feel a certain sympathy for Kenny here. At the very beginning, I think he was given too broad a reach. He was basically... Oh, I think we still have the line with uh, with Gavin, so we, we might try and get Philip back on a, a better line. Um, I guess the same question to you, Gavin. It's the fundamental issue, right? Uh, stick or twist? Uh, if, we, if we twist the alternatives that are out there, I mean, obviously, you would go on a, a proper recruitment drive... Uh, in August of last year, ah, we'll, we'll just give Philip a ring back, I think, to, to see if we can get him on a, on a better line. Twenty-four. We could do well in the Euro. We've, we've lost your line there, Philip, properly. So we, we, we'll uh, we'll give you a dial back, and um, okay. They're, okay. Thank they're, you. they're both in the same Zoom line. It turns out, so we can't go back to uh, Tobacco. Um, oh come on. Okay. The, 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 the Wi-Fi in uh, in Azerbaijan notoriously strong, obviously as 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 we, as we uh, suffer here in Dublin. It's an it's an, it is an interesting question. Uh, the, the the sort of succession plan where where that to come into focus over the next little while. Who's who's next man up? If well, we don't know, right? So out, you, know? you know, is it is it somebody from internally in the group? Is it um is it does Jim Crawford get promoted? Is that the whole point of having under twenty one? Is it too early in his career? It probably is. Like there's talk of um, John O'Shea being a viable candidate. Like. Dare we look at the odds for the next Republic of Ireland manager again and and uh, depress ourselves again? Um, may, maybe what you're talking about there is actually a more realistic situation where things to go south over the next little while. But, but I do think that the list of candidates is uh, a feather in the cap of Stephen Kenny, to be honest. I think it, it, the, the list of possible successors were, were things to go badly. Now, I mean, the, the lads are right. This is a vital window. These two these two windows are vital and, and a win probably does need to be chalked up. How much of an impact do you think the COVID issue and the fact that it's on the back pages two days in a row is going to have there's criticism from um, Gavin Komsky of how the FAI missed the chance to get on top of the Robinson story by maybe not putting them out there that was definitely one option you know put out one of the players who is vaccinated put out a safe pair of hands who's not going to answer those questions who hasn't had COVID like it was an opportunity for them to just manage that a little bit better yeah, yeah, it does. It does seem that way, and I think we can actually put that to to, to Gavin now. He's on the line. Like, what what what's your take on that, Gavin? The the idea of Robinson being out there in in the open yesterday and and being the guy to to field questions and and being in that position where ultimately it does pop up that he is unvaccinated. Yeah, Robinson, a very genial character in front of the media. Oh, and he he does media. He does media every time he's in the camp. So I don't know. Like, I mean, when. Like we've asked the question of players previous to this, are you vaccinated? And they've generally said uh, yes, or I, you know, it's a private medical question, so I'm not going to answer. But Robinson went ahead and went ahead and answered it. And then like with FBI, like I mean, what <laughs> what else are you meant to do? Like Robinson is <laughs> Robinson's got the shovel out and started digging. Like you can't you can't hold him back from the edge at that point. So, um, it, but it, it like it's a big big story because Robinson is the I, he's, I'm pretty sure that Robinson is the first. UK based player to come out and say that he hasn't been vaccinated and I think the frustration among it was the fact that he didn't fully explain why he wasn't vaccinated he just said well, it was my choice and he kept saying it was my choice and then when we made the point that yeah but like it, it, would you accept that it, it's cost you caps and he said yeah it's annoying that the virus can take away caps from you and then we made the point but like had you been vaccinated you would have been far less likely to have missed the Portugal game and have been un, uh, have been unfit to start the two games that followed after it. And he just said, "Yeah, it's annoying that the virus can take it." So that was kind of annoying. And the way uh, the way there was no explanation, like the re like the fact he didn't explain why he hadn't had it means leaves us open to a lot of speculation around it, um, which isn't helpful for him either. No, and and look, uh, if there was an explanation, um, it'd be no harm to get that out. I, I, what I'm asking, I suppose, really, is, is there is this distraction significant? It kind of feels like it didn't matter that much in the press conference to Callum Robinson. You'd hope that the debate isn't going to have an impact on his performance, and that actually he will he clearly going to get picked. I mean, I I think it would be remarkable if he wasn't picked in this game of all games. Uh, for various reasons, him being our uh, best attacking player at the moment is kind of the, the key reason for him to, mm -hmm. to be in the team. Um, 
is it going to have an impact on the team? Is it going to have an impact on preparations at all? Is it is it in any way an annoyance for Stephen Kenny, or do they just go, look, it's it, completely irrelevant. That's noise outside the camp. We've got a game this weekend. Do they do they somehow turn it to their advantage? I d- I, don't <laughs> I I don't know whether they can put it to their advantage. I don't know how much of a distraction it's really going to be out of the match, you know, because you know, like as we're led to believe, Robinson is far from the only unvaccinated player in the Republic of Ireland camp. I'm sure he's had a couple of days of reading his name on social media um, attached to quite a lot of, of bile, really. So that's not a nice experience for him, I guess. But I can't imagine that it's too much of a distraction for this game on Saturday because they're well used to dealing with COVID issues ahead of games and COVID stories and COVID sideshows ahead of games. So I can't imagine it's too much of a disruption for, they, uh, for, uh, for their preparations for Saturday. Although what it, do, what it does kind of cast a little bit of doubt over is the fact that, you know, unvaccinated players still have to get tested 72 hours before uh, every game, whereas vaccinated players are exempt. So, I mean, there is, there is a chance that the unvaccinated players can still miss out on games at short notice. And I would imagine that it's a fact of, it's a fact of great annoyance to Stephen Kenny in the wider range of things that uh, he has players who are unvaccinated, that he has to answer these questions and he has to, uh, that unvaccinated players are more likely to miss out big games at shorter notice than vaccinated players, which is a headache that Stephen Kenny could certainly do without. And sometimes with false positives, as we've seen in the past. Um, I, we've got Philip Quinn back now. Philip, the, the point about the amount of time that Kenny's had, I think most reasonable observers are aware of the fact and take, you know, put, put a fairly sizable portion of blame on the fact that he, he took over the team in the midst of COVID and as a result of that has very rarely had the full squad together. So one of the reasons why I think he should be given the, the Euros campaign is because I, I don't feel like I've seen the full effect of the Stephen Kenny imprimatur and the new coaching ticket in particular. The, the fact that they, they got a, a first team coach from Chelsea I think is a ringing endorsement of, of his candidacy as well that like we don't know really what the Stephen Kenny team looks like. I don't really think that the 18 months he's been in charge is a long enough time for us to have a full frank assessment of what Kenny is capable of. It, it's a point, Chair, that uh, you wait, you make well. Um, I think 18 months is a long time. I think 16 games is a long time. I think a 6% win record is not good. Um, look, he, I, I accept there were COVID difficulties, um, but... I don't accept that uh, they excuse some of the performances that, that Ireland have put in. Um, also, things haven't happened on this on the Kenny reign that I, I, some people just tend to, tend to ignore. You mentioned Anthony Barry has come in there, and by all accounts, he is doing very well. And I think it actually has been better since he arrived in. But Damien Duff walked out. Alan Kelly walked out. These were people that were part of Kenny's team. Um, and that, that, was very, that was never really explained, I mean, for Damien Duff to walk away. Um, so there, there are things that have been happening along, along the lines that, that, that I don't think you can ignore. Um, you know, 16 matches is a long time, 12 games are a competitive win. I do, I do give Kenny a certain amount of, of, of leeway with the COVID, and I, and I just touched on what Gavin said there. You know, this week hasn't been easy with the Callum Robinson distraction, and you can see Kenny is clearly awkward with it. Um, he's a decent man. He's a strong social conscience. I've admired things that he's done, like the, taking the knee in Hungary. I mean, that was a really powerful message that he sent out. And I think, you know, he has invested, his, his, he's invested everything into making this job successful. But the FAI are a hard-nosed, you know, commercial. They have a hard-nosed commercial side, and they have problems at the moment people wanting to associate themselves as sponsors of the Irish football team. Sky have come on board as sponsors of the women's team. The men, no one is sponsoring the men's team this week. We've got senior men, 21s, 17s, 19s, all playing, and we haven't got a sponsor. And that's worrying for the FBI. The attendance next at Qatar could be telling here on Tuesday, you know. Um, bean counters do have a say in all these things. They're, they're one of the reasons, you know, the keeps the whole show of business. Business keeps the FBI on the road. They're relying again yesterday on COVID resilience funding from the government and, and more support. They're relying on UEFA. They're relying on decency, decent terms in the banks. They have to wash their own face. And for that to happen, they need a strong commercial unit. They need someone back in the Irish team and they need 50,000, 45,000 coming to every home game. And that's, that's going to focus the minds of the FAI chiefs when they sit down in November. And there will be a review in November. John Hill has said that. He said it on the record. There will be a review. And that's why I think Kenny needs a strong finish. And if he doesn't get it, I think he could be in difficulty. Well, I think to link, I, to, to, I think to link the performance of the team and the results to the lack of a sponsor is fairly disingenuous, to be honest. Because like the main reason they don't have a sponsor is because of the wreckage that we read about in Champagne Football. Like there's a 
there's this ratings agency called RepTrack who who uh, who, who gather the, the public's opinions on uh, various companies and bodies throughout Ireland. And the FBI have ranked 100 out of 100 for two years running. Like they blow Irish water and Facebook. Like Facebook are driving up local rents and dismantling global democracy. And they're still more popular than the FBI. So I, I don't think that, I don't think linking the team's performances and results thus far to the lack of a sponsor is fair. I think I, it, it's a fair point to make that the attendance at, Cat at the Qatar game will be interesting because ultimately the vehicle that runs the FEI is the senior team's effort, uh, uh, senior team's uh, ability to sell out the Aviva Stadium, um, and which they will do uh, against Portugal probably just because Cristiano Ronaldo's in town. I think that's a fair point, but I don't think the I don't think the lack the lack of a sponsor can be pinned on uh, the fact that Stephen Kenny has won one game in, in 16. Well, I, I, I'll reply to that, Gavin, if I may, because I think the word disingenuous, I think it is genuous. Uh, I, 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 I'm shocked at disingenuous. I think it's relevant. The, the senior women's team got a sponsor. Uh, if the men's senior team had done well, if they qualified for the Euro finals, which they didn't do, if they'd had a, had a Nations League campaign and not, lo not lost their third seeding, the World Cup, which ended up putting, it, putting us in with Serbia, um, they might have got a sponsor. And if, it, if we were doing better in the World Cup, but a chance of coming for a top two finish, I think we'd have a better chance of getting a sponsor. So I would disagree. I think they are linked. Um, just on, on the the point about the sponsor, obviously, um, I think we all know that there was a gambling firm in, and the FAI turned them down. And I think that was the right thing for the FAI to do. It will be interesting to see who does want to associate with the Irish football team and what value they place on the association into the future. The one the one question about that though is like, how many managers in world football would actually be able to bring a sponsor and draw a crowd? I think there's an obvious on the shelf break glass in case of emergency solution who would bring hype and bring attention but I'm not really sure that the right thing for Irish football is to go down the Roy Keane direction again it, it, I, I've no doubt that it would bring a sponsor and it would certainly drive traffic and you would sell tickets and there would be mad hype for the first couple of games but I guess Philip this comes back to the question like what are the alternatives out there in a post Stephen Kenny world yeah, that's, that's, that's been thrown at me a few times and other journalists of colleagues. You know, and FBI spoke about it as well, like, you know, within little circles, you know, what do you do? Do you, do you just break it up and go away? Or, um, and who's out there? And, and what, what, what can the FBI afford? They don't have an awful lot of money, although I believe they are paying, they are paying Kenny more than uh, Ryan Giggs is getting at Wales, although his situation is a bit different at the moment. Um, but going back to the question of, look, I think we all want to see the Irish team play the way, the way Kenny wants it to play is, 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 is good. I like it. But it's, there's not an end product. We need to be, as Paul McGrath said at the end, though, we need to be a little bit more direct at times, mix it up a little bit. So is there another manager who can do that? Who can bring us in, uh, get our players to be comfortable on the ball, but every now and then know when to play the right pass, the forward pass. You know, the first thing, the first thing of any player should be to pass the ball forward. Second is pass the diagonal. Third is pass it sideways, and then pass it backwards. That's the fourth one. That's the basic tenet of coaching. So I think we need to be a little bit more direct. And I think we saw that when we went to Hungary for the friendly in June. They mixed it up a little bit. We saw plenty of it in Portugal. That was good. But at home, we're a little bit more paid. We're a little bit too, I think, pedestrian. Okay, back to your point. Who's out there? Well, look, I mean, there's a lot of managers out there. I mean, for example. Who, who, what, what young managers are out there who are associated with teams that play decent football, who worked off a small budget? Someone like Eddie Hale, Bournemouth, would be one who come to mind for me. He didn't have any money. He didn't have very little money. And he brought that team to the Premier League on, on very modest resources. And they were known for playing a decent brand of football. That's just, an, that's just a name I would throw out there. I agree with you. The Roy Keane thing, Roy would be huge to be sponsored falling all over uh, the Irish football team. And the three or four results would be fantastic. And then Roy would probably have a row with somebody and it would probably end up in tears. So that may not be the result, the outcome. But it comes back to the bottom line. You know, do the FAI take a punt on Kenny for two more years and give him until Euro 2024? What if that hasn't worked? So that's what they have to decide. They're on the edge of the Niagara Falls. Do we go with Stephen Kenny in the barrel and take our chances we're going to land safely? Or do we, do we roll back and go another, another direction? That's the question that they have to answer. And I think results will come down, will determine the answer of that, that dilemma that we're, where we are in Irish football. And we're all talking about it. And it's good that it's healthy debate. That's why I go back to my earlier point. The results game, results don't matter. What else does? Kenny needs to deliver results. Would you be confident that someone like Eddie Howe would take a pay cut in comparison to, say, his, his previous salary at Bournemouth in, in order to manage the Republic of Ireland? Like, is, is, it a, is it a realistic target, Philip? It might be. Who knows? You've got to actually ask him. You know, I mean, I don't know Eddie Howe. I don't know what, what, what the salary was at Bournemouth. I assume it was more. Um, yeah. Look, but I'm just saying, he's, he's an example of somebody... Uh, I think was, you know who did well on a small budget and, and, and had, had, a, had a team that came from nowhere to punch above its weight. And let's be honest, and that comes back to a bit of sympathy I have for Kenny as well. We accept he doesn't have the, the firepower that Charlton had, or or that you know even 
that 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 uh, that O'Neill and, and McCarthy had to a certain degree. So he, he, whoever comes in has to make do the best of what they have in front of them, and it will take a little while. I'm, I'm not quite sure though. One other point: Kenny is kind of working from the top down, trying to sort of instill, you know, the Irish senior team plays a certain way, all of the teams below should play in a certain way. Maybe it should, it should be inverted. We should have the under 15, 17 is playing a certain way, so when they come up, they're ready to step into the senior team, a bit like what the, the Germans do. But look, would, would, would Eddie Howe take it for? I don't know. He's had to work for a while, you know. Pick up the phone and ask him. That's the way I would do it. And there are other managers out there as well, you know, that that might suit. Look, we're not going to get Zinedine Zidane or Antonio Conte, but um, you know. I don't know, Alex Neal, I don't know what, what but he's, he, he did a reasonable job at Norwich, a reasonable job at Blackburn. I don't know, he's another one that we've mentioned. I don't know. I just, but Eddie Howe was the one that came to mind. But I agree, I think Roy Keane would be a short term solution. And we don't want a short term solution now. We need something that, if we are going to change, and there's no guarantee we're going to change, um, but I think if we do change, we need somebody to come in and still do, still, still implement this type of football that Kenny is trying to play, only with a better end product. Just, just one other thing, just to ask you, Philip. Like, it's probably um, there's, there's two elements to, to your point there as well on on the sponsorship and, and, and the revenue. So, so there's a sponsorship, obviously, and then you talk about the the bums and seats for for the Qatar game. Uh, do you not think that there is a, a really strong public support out there that, regardless of the, of the sponsor, that the fans are behind Stephen Kenny, are willing to show up, are willing to to watch this team live and support them? The fans are standing in the games um, against Azerbaijan and Serbia, and I mean. Gavin was there. We were, we were there. They were, they were terrific, and they actually they helped the team. They almost sucked the ball into the, the south end for the for the late equalisers in both those matches. That's the end of the way we always score goals in. But what, you shouldn't overlook the fact that we hadn't had fans at matches for for what it was eighteen months. They were desperate to get to go and watch a game because it's an event, you know. They'd be desperate to watch Ronaldo and and and, and, and crew against Portugal. Um, so there's there's an element that the Irish fans have been starved of watching the team, so they want to get out and, and, and support them. I think there's three hundred fans that made their way to Azerbaijan, and and they'll they'll, they'll make. Their, their, their presence felt on Saturday. So, look, there, I think there is broadly as well support for what Kenny wants to do. But, look, um, if, if, if Kenny had had all these 16 games and there was, say, seven or eight at home and, and nine away, I think the response might be a little bit different among the supporters. But we, we don't know that because they've only been there for a couple of games and they've been good. And they would be very good against Portugal. Don't worry about that. So, I think there's a little bit of... Um, you have to take that the fact that, that fans have been missing matches. They've been missing... You know, the, the, the drug of following the Irish football team. I think they've also been fed up watching the Irish football team play the football that we played under Mick second coming, under O'Neill and under Trap, where the the product wasn't very good. And I, I think, like, I, you know, if it, it's interesting to hear you, you accept that we need to play a more progressive brand of football but want a better end product. I think everybody wants that. Like, and I, I, I don't think for a second that um, Kenny is above criticism. We were critical of his positioning of Troy Parrott and, and his use of Troy Parrott essentially so far uh, in since since Parrott has made it into the team. He's been playing at a meta position and it hasn't made any sense. Stephen Doyle was very critical of that decision on this show in the past as well. So, Gavin, what, what's your assessment of um, whether or not it's more or less likely that he is given the opportunity to take the squad through to the Euros? Because that's, that's what we're talking about here today. Mm, I think he probably should. Like, I mean, who's better than him on the budget that the FAI can pay you know like eddie howe did well in england but like we can't go back down the route of hiring a manager who doesn't understand what's below the irish football team like i mean i don't think there's any other football culture on earth that would treat the national team as a completely completely separate entity to everything else that goes on in the football culture of a country and that's what the fei in ireland have done for decades (laughs) i mean and we're seeing the fruits of it now or the lack of fruits uh, of it now on the idea that Kenny like should mix it up more, like he has been mixing it up more. And as as Philip alluded to in an odd game, like I mean, Ireland, let me see, Ireland have averaged 43 long passes a game in qualifiers so far. That was 51 under Mick McCarthy. So it's less, but it's not significantly less. I mean, 11 percent of their passes have gone long in the qualifiers under Kenny so far. It was eight and a half percent of the nation's league last year under Kenny so that was that shows a little bit more pragmatism if you want to use that word and under Mick and the last year under O'Neill 14% of their passes went long so they're, they are mixing it up I, I, I don't see the case for drafting in a guy an Eddie Howe or some other manager who's worked in England um, just because they've done well on a budget it's a, it's a completely different job and then like it's important to be competitive and qualify for the years in 2024. You bring in a new manager, there's a level of betting in there's, and there's a level of transition that begins and you kind of end up writing off results. I think you might as well 
use this campaign as that transition, as Stephen Kenny himself, I think, has alluded to by saying that he's building a team for uh, for Germany in, in 2024. Yeah, Philip, I guess that, that that's a yeah. good point that we probably should have addressed a little bit earlier on, that the, the complete lack of a football industry in this country has, has been sustained by the quality of um, results from the senior international team over since since 1987 maybe it, it might be fair to go back to that this this feels to me like an opportunity for a proper conversation to be had by the FAI which says okay this this might well be rock bottom but unless we link the league of ireland particularly post brexit unless we link the league of ireland somehow to the production line and the player pathway this isn't going to be there's no there's no long term fix for this because we can't export our young our best young players to the UK anymore to get them trained in academies. That system is broken and the future can't just be parachuting in expensive managers to somehow rescue results to get to a tournament where, you know, maybe the same thing happens as, as under Trapatoni and we get spanked in three games. Like that's that's for me the main kind of bit of the joined up thinking that needs to happen here. And maybe it's not Stephen Kenny, but somebody needs to understand what the under 21s are doing and as you say the style of play that they're having and it seems like we're actually getting that direction under the um the good doctor at this point so like that for me that's the reason to back kenny and to give him the opportunity because otherwise we're just hitting the reset button and have learned nothing uh, i'll come in there if I may. just a couple of points to pick up what gavin said there I, um yeah I, I do think actually well sorry on your point there uh Jerry, i think uh post breaks there is going to be a different a different shape up i think irish players are, go, are not going to be looking across the irish sea immediately you're going to go to you look at josh cullen of belgium i think we're going to look at players going more to the continent which i think i think is a good thing um but i i, I think people sort of dismiss you know the trapatoni o'neill mccarthy era sort of dinosaurs and i think it's been very harsh the best football the an irish team has played in the last 12 years was against france uh, in 2009 in paris and we played we played them off the park and we won one nil over 100 over 90 minutes. There's a strong that suggestion, was, Philip, on that uh, night though that the players ignored Trapattoni and, well, that, and no, went that out. Was, that, that's what they say happened. They they that they yeah. didn't follow his instructions. Like that's what all of the players on the night who you've ever spoken to, who we've ever spoken yeah. to, claim yeah. happened that night. Yeah, well, that's yeah, that's that, that, that's the same player power. Um, maybe we, maybe we should see some of that a bit more. But uh, you can't ignore what Trapattoni did. He, he got us to within. He was part that team he, he, when he took over. He said, don't judge me on my record, judge me on what I do here now going forward. And he won his first competitive away game. Martin O'Neill won his first first game competitive was away from home. But Carthy won his first competitive game away from home. Kenny didn't do that. If he had done that, if he started getting results, he would have bought himself more time. And this Euro 24 red herring has been thrown in now in the last couple of months. Why didn't Kenny say that when he took over? At his first press conference in uh, August 2020, he should have said, my, 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 my challenge here is to build a team and they put structures in place that would sustain Irish football from the top bottom for Europe, to, uh, to, and, and qualify for the European Champions in 2024. He didn't say any of that. He's only said that now. It's almost like he realises he needs to grasp at something that uh, maybe he's sinking, he's danger of going under. So he's saying, give me another two more years. If he'd said that back in August of last year, 14 months ago, and the FBI came out and backed him and said, yeah, you've got a four-year deal, you've got a four-year plan, things would have been different, but he didn't. So I, I'm, I'm just think it's uh, Kenny is being. It's almost like uh, we're ignoring the fact that the Euro playoffs went badly. The Nations League was a disaster, and the World Cup was over after two games. He's now saying, "Give me two more years." But we can't. Be, we can't trust what's going to happen in the next two years is going to be better than what we've seen so far. But can't be sure of that. You, Cannot be sure of it. You compare uh, him to, to Mick McCarthy, and you say like Mick McCarthy won his first away game. Like, I presume you're referring to the, to the second stint in, in Gibraltar there, and, and then also using the Nations League as, as an argument, which didn't necessarily go too well for Mick McCarthy either. Um, it was I think Mick, Mick wasn't in Nations League. I think he was at the European Championships. Uh, he didn't do any Nations League matches. Sorry, but, Martin, uh, no, apologies. Mick, 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 that was in Mick relation to Martin. Coming. My apologies. Mick, yeah. Yeah. No, Mick's second coming. What, what wasn't what, what what wanted to be? Then but Gibraltar for Mick. Sorry. It, but he did what he did do though is he got us to the last minute of the last qualifier mm. against Denmark at home where it was one all and we were pushing to try and score a goal to come at the first to come. He qualified for the European Championship Finals. Denmark got to the Euro Semi-Finals and Switzerland got the Euro Quarter-Finals. I don't think we're that, we're that bad. Mick has been much maligned. But this campaign, the World Cup, was over after two games. Do, do you think he should have been kept on then, uh, Philip? Well, I think he should have been given the playoff. Yeah, I think there was a force majeure with COVID and I think he, the FAI should have said he can carry the team into the playoff. Whether it would have made any difference, nobody knows. I think and then Kenny, you see, could have been pushed down the line a little bit, which would have given him a bit more time to say, well, look, I've missed out in the Euro playoffs. I may have missed out in the Nations League because we may have got to the Euro finals. Who knows? And then he would have had this World Cup campaign to build it for Euro 2024. And look, it's 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 apples and pears. We'll never know now. But I think I, I thought Mick should have got the playoffs. He didn't, and that's 
That's water under the bridge now. But he did get us to the final minutes of the European regular of the Euro 2020 campaign, which I think people overlook. Um, yeah, look, no need for us to really to get mix record at this point. Maybe there is. Maybe that's the the bit that actually is um, is is the is sticking in the craw of the, the people who don't think Stephen Kenny's doing a good job. I don't know. Maybe maybe, but this probably isn't the time for it. You got instinct, Philip. Are the FAI going to stick or twist? Um, good instincts. You know, I, I've never called for Kenny to go, and on a, on a, cause he's, he's a decent man, and, a, and a, a lot of time for him on a, on a personal level. Um, but I keep coming back to the bottom line, and I just do. I know you, you've kind of sort of shunted to one side, and, and Gavin doesn't necessarily agree with me, but the commercial end of it. But I think that's a that, that, that's a big factor. The crowd against Qatar is going to be crucial. Um, I still say what I said at the start of this, uh, the, the, our chat. I still think he needs a big finish, and by that, you know, certainly a win, a win on Saturday. Um, and a win against Luxembourg, and I think he's set fair for two more years. Um, anything less than that, and I think we could be, you know, we could be gathered around uh, Abbottstown in the middle of November, waiting for white smoke or otherwise to 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 to, 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 to light up the sky. Um, you know, he's he's at a point now in his journey with the Irish football team where you know it's time for it's time to deliver. I'm sorry, and we, we're all talking about it, but you know, the tail of the tape is ultimately what what, what determines whether Stephen Kenny stays as Irish manager or not. All right, Gavin Cooney, last word to you on this. Are they going to get that result this weekend? Yes, why not? But, like, I mean, I, I think that they probably should. I mean, you look, like, since Robbie Keane retired, Jerry, the only teams that we've beaten in competitive home games are Moldova, Georgia twice, and Gibraltar. So, like, I mean, it, it, shouldn't, be, it shouldn't be a massive, um, massive surprise that we couldn't beat Azerbaijan at home. And they scored, you know, like, only, like, they had relatively few shots in the game and, and scored from distance. So, like, the margins in these games have not been have not been very large, you know, in, in these games against against Minnows. So drawing against Azerbaijan is obviously bad, but it's not, it doesn't wear the sheen of abject disgrace when you compare it to our struggles since Robbie retired. So um, Ireland are a better team than Azerbaijan. And like Philip said, they they have been better away from home so far under Stephen Kenny. So uh, yeah, hopefully they, they will deliver that result. Deliver that result this weekend and we can stop talking about progress and, and start talking about results. All right, Philip, Gavin, good stuff this morning. Thanks a million for joining us. Cheers. It's... Uh, 8.44 this morning here on OTBAM. Brought to you by Gillette. Good morning, start with Gillette. Put your best face forward with their new and improved razors.